As Librarian of Congress, I authorized the loan, the first loan ever, of an item that's considered a national treasure to a World Expo. And in that role of authorizing official, I was involved with making sure that not only would the Koran be safely transported, but also safely displayed. And so we worked with our curators and conservators to design a special case for the exhibit and also to make sure that during the time that the Quran was displayed, it would be in ideal conditions and be returned to the United States in a good condition, but also that it would be shown to its best advantage. Before the Quran even left the United States, it was examined and put in special preservation boxes and secured in a way that would make sure that during the special transport, air transport to, the, to Dubai, that it would not be damaged at all. And that means that it had to have special cases that would ensure the temperature control around uh, the item as well. And there was also special security that had to be established to accompany the Quran, as well as an actual conservator and a librarian to be uh, escorts. Think of the Mona Lisa coming to uh, any place and what you would do with a piece of rare art or a fine jewel. That's what we did for the Quran, and the same types of measures were taken. It's especially significant that the Quran that was used by the third president of the United States, but also one of the founders of the basic principles that the United States was established with, was studying the Quran as a law student and using it as a reference tool to help think about how the laws in the United States would be used to make sure that there was freedom and also that there would be religious freedom. And his study of the Quran, understanding of what it meant to the Islamic religion was critical for his insistence on that aspect in our founding documents. One thing that I hope that visitors to the pavilion will appreciate is that it, this Quran and the ownership of the Quran and how it was used and how it was saved from a fire, one of the few items in a fire that destroyed most of Thomas Jefferson's collection in 1851, that the survival of this Quran and its symbolism of what this country is about is something that we hope that they will come away with by seeing it on display here. Um, well, the Thomas Jefferson Quran is a clear demonstration that Islam is woven into the fabric of American society. Um, even back then, there was an interest in understanding Islam as an important factor, not only in world religion, but in American society itself. Um, if you, I mean, aside from the, the Jefferson Quran, if you look at the dome of the main reading room, Islam is mentioned as one of the civilizations that have affected uh, world history and world civilization. Um, the Thomas Jefferson Quran, although the most attractive um, Quran to visitors from delegates from all over the world, it is not the least, it's not the only Quran that is in the possession of the Library of Congress. In fact, we have a very impressive uh, collection of Qurans, some dating back to the 8th century, 
um, right up less than a hundred years after the Prophet and they are written in the Hijazi script and yet most visitors still want to see the Jefferson Quran um, for out of interest delegations from all over the world uh, request to look at the Jefferson Quran.